Good day to you, and welcome to another virtual program from the Konica Jig Institute. This program will focus on the important but often overlooked role of women in colonial America. I'll now hand us over to someone more experienced than I, volunteer Katie Grau. In the 18th century, women were responsible for the management of the household, although many women would own and participate in business outside of the home. As part of this household management, women would tend to home gardens and to the crops on subsistence farms. Rhubarb, also known as pie plant, was a popular crop that is reported to have been introduced to the colonies by Benjamin Franklin. From these home gardens and fields, women were also responsible for cooking for the family. For working class families, cooking was commonly done over open flames in the fireplace, with baking and roasting being among the most popular forms of food preparation. To that end, 18th century homes almost all utilized the same basic tools, like cast iron pots, roasting spits, and baking kettles. Women were also on the front lines of medical care, frequently using remedies passed down from mother to daughter to treat common maladies and ailments, a task which required knowledge of the medicinal uses of herbs and other plants. Women also produced the thread and yarn used by their family for sewing, knitting, and weaving by spinning wool or flax with either a drop spindle, which could be carried in the pocket, or with a wheel, which was stationary. Marriage and motherhood was the expected trajectory for 18th century women. They spent their early years preparing for it, learning the skills they would need to run a household. Wealth and materials were stored up in the form of a dowry, a collection of money, clothing, and other personal and household items for the young woman's eventual marriage. These things could be stored in a dower chest, such as this original one at the Konigajig Institute, and given to the new couple as they established their new household. Upon marriage, a woman lost her status under the law as a single woman and became femme covert, entering under the legal cover of her husband and dissolving her personal legal identity and rights of property ownership. This meant that women could not pursue legal action but relied on their husbands to do so on their behalf. And since women could not legally own property, their material possessions technically belonged to their husbands. From our modern perspective, we would assume that women aspired to gain independence but this situation was generally accepted and expected for women as they entered into marriage. While at the background of history, there are innumerable stories to be told of women's courage, defiance, and everyday life. With 2020 being the year of women, we encourage you to research more on this fascinating subject. Thank you for joining us on another virtual program at the Konica Jig Institute. And thank you to volunteers Katie Grau, Pippa McCullough, Mary Bullen, Laura Quintiani, Karen Slagle, and Lorelai Considine for helping to film this video.